So I'm Hugh and Hook, and this is The Real Review, and I'm talking to Adrian Sparks, who is the chief winemaker, Mount Pleasant Wines in the Hunter Valley, which is one of our Real Review top wineries of Australia for 2021. And one of the oldest, most venerable wineries in the Hunter Valley, and it's recently changed hands. So we'll maybe ask Adrian a few questions about that, but how's it all going there, Adrian? Oh, yeah, really good. Thank you. Uh, we're undergoing our cellar doors full renovation. So we're currently working with the sounds of jackhammers and all sorts of things going on. Uh, but it's been really good. It's been a really good six months, uh, a real refresh and a real restart for the brand. And um, everyone's really excited. So, yeah, very happy. So that's the main change that's going to be happening under the new ownership. What, what else is happening? Um, we're currently working with Denomination in Sydney about our brand, about our structure, um, looking at all our branding. Um, so that's in probably two thirds of the way through. Um, so that's pretty exciting. That'll be happening. We'll probably release in the early 2022, um, along with the cellar door. Um, we've recently put on a new distributor, Young and Rashley. Um, so we started with those guys in October, which is really good. Um, and just we've employed a few more people um, to help us out. Um, so creating a still a very small team, but um, you know, all going well at this stage. So it sounds like there's been a little injection of extra funds there. Um, yeah, McWilliams, of course, and Mount Pleasant were uh, used to be owned by the same, well, joint ownership. Now they've been split apart and the two companies are under separate different ownerships. And uh, so Mount Pleasant is a standalone winery now, a standalone vineyard. It's, um, yeah, it's a quite, a, quite a big change really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, new, very new for all of us in terms of, uh, when we separated, um, we lost all our marketing, um, distribution, production, um, sales. And so it was a really sort of tough couple of months to try and keep the place going. Uh, but we got through that. Um, you know, everyone, the small team stepped up. We're sort of making the changes that we've been needing to make for a few years now. Um, we've taken out some vines at Lovedale um, that were struggling. So we've replanted those, which is really good. So they'll all come online um, in a couple of years' time. So it'll be some semi on and some different clones of Chardonnay um, that we've always needed. Um, so to have those in the ground is, is really good and, um, you know, sets itself up, so sets ourselves up for another, you know, 30, 40, 50, you know, we're celebrating our hundred years this year. So hopefully hundred years. And of course, in the middle of all this, the 2020 vintage was a wipeout because of the bushfire smoke taint. Was that a, a blessing in disguise when you were going through all these other changes? Uh, well, we actually made it a call not to pick due to the smoke. Uh, the day prior to us finding out we went into administration. So it was all a bit of a sledgehammer um, two days in a row. That, I mean, for me, picking fruit and doing vintage is the ultimate time and to not be able to do that was pretty disappointing. And then to rock up to work the next day, the next day with security guards turning up, we're all going, what's going on here? Uh, yeah, and then finding all that out was sort of a yeah, crazy sort of time. And then COVID hit. And uh, yeah, so 2020 was a write-off in a number of ways. But you've had a very good vintage in 21, I think. Yeah, 21, um, the semions are exceptional. Uh, getting goes into bottle. Uh, the 2021 reds are actually sitting down on the 22nd of November to go through our classifications. So we're really happy with those. Uh, we've got new plantings of our Pinot Noir coming online from the old mother vine block, which is 100 years old this year. Um, the fruit from the estate looks excellent. Um, it's always a little bit earlier than the rest of the valley. Um, so the old hill and the old paddock fruit looks amazing. The old contours block. Um, looks really, really good. And then fruit from Rose Hill, which is a couple of weeks late, late is a little bit, um, a little bit more elegant, a little bit lighter, um, but sort of still true, very true to what Rose Hill does best. That's the style, isn't it? So one of my uh, Dorothy Dixer questions, uh, if there's one thing that explains the high quality of the Mount Pleasant wines, what would that be? Um, I think we're very fortunate in our position. Um, we're based right up against the Brokenback Range, and so our vineyards are in the shade around 5.30, 6 o'clock at night. Um, and so we're very fortunate for that positioning, and that helps us retain the fresh fruits, the tannin profile um, that is synonymous with Mount Pleasant wine. So I'd say that would be, um, you know, one of the, the great things about where we are and, and what we have. I think most winemakers have some benchmark wines in their heads, which often go back to, you know, their impressionable early years, perhaps. Are there any great wines that stick in your memory as being benchmarks or a wine that you particularly aspire to? 
Um, well, before Mount Pleasant, uh, one wine that stuck out for me was a 2004 Eileen Hardy Chardonnay. I remember trying that for the first time and being blown away um, and then got to meet Tom Newton um, and he went through the process of how he made it and that was quite invigorating. Um, Wayne Rostang out of the Rhone, I really love. I think he's a um, very good producer across, you know, all his coat wines and then, you know, throughout his whole portfolio, I really love their wines. Uh, and, a, and a hunter wine that I loved when I first moved to the Valley was the Tyrrell's 2011 Four Acres. I thought that was a beautiful wine and, and very classically Hunter Valley, very light framed. And that's probably still my favourite wine of theirs at all, of all time. I love it. Of all the wines you make, Adrian, at Mount Pleasant, is there a favourite, a personal favourite? Uh, it's like asking, who's your favourite kid? Depends on what day it is and how well behaved they are. I um, would say oh, look, I, I came to the Hunter Valley to make Rose Hill. I love Rose Hill. The old 46 finds um, produce this light, pretty, elegant, um, you know, perfumed wine, which I think really resonates throughout, across the Hunter Valley. Um, and, probably, and probably the one I've most fallen in love with since being here is the 1921 Vines Old Paddock. Um, I think is a wine of great intensity, structure, and tannin. Um, and I just think that's a vineyard that uh, um, is just in the perfect location, um, just shaded by everything, the, the winds, the sun, and produces outstanding fruit year on year. Um, and I just, it's only, I think, 0.74 of a hectare. We get about two tonne every year, and it's just the most amazing two tonne of fruit. It's interesting that uh, you mentioned Rose Hill, which was planted by Morris O'Shea, I think, wasn't it? Uh, and let's say it was Lovedale. Were there any great of the old Morris O'Shea wines that you've tasted that stuck in your memory? Uh, I remember trying a 53 Lovedale, uh, which would have been the third vintage. Well, the first was 1950, so the fourth. Um, and on point opening, it wasn't it was sort of like, oh, this is a bit shocked under cork or something, but give it 20 minutes of air and it was sprung to life, this most beautiful complex, interesting wine. Very interesting. Thank you for your time today, Adrian. Um, I'm talking with Adrian Sparks, Chief Winemaker at Mount Pleasant Wines, Hunter Valley, and one of the top wineries of the year for Australia 2021. Well done, Adrian, and thank you for, for, for talking to us today. Thank you. Goodbye.